Okay, today Dundalk TV is sitting down with Nick Franks, who I met at CCBC, is a student who is working towards becoming a veterinarian. Uh, Nick has uh, vision problems and uh, would like to share uh, his journey uh, with us um, about his vision problems. So Nick, what would you like to say today? Um, I suffer from a condition. I really don't know what the scientific term is called for, but I call it inverted vision. It's when your eyes see better in the dark. Um, but I'm blind as a bat in bright places, so people, for some reason my doctors thought that I was blind. Um, and it's, it, it didn't, I didn't get like, the, I wasn't always like this. I, I actually used to be able to drive during the day. I would ride bikes like normal kids. I eventually got a motor scooter. And about age 16, age 17, I started noticing that my eyes were getting bad. And it got to the point where my eyes were starting to burn during the day. And I could not open them. I tried telling the doctors this, that I could see fine in the dark and that it was, and that it was just easier to get around in the dark. And because of this, I had a hard, I, I, they would, they were having a hard time believing me. And I had, and I first had a bonehead for, um, for a eye doctor. So I eventually went to see a guy's second opinion. I told them over and over again. And then, all right, then I said, finally, all right, let me prove it. Turn off the lights and close the door in the room we were in. It had no windows whatsoever. They turned off the lights, they closed the door, and I read straight down the vision chart in almost pitch black darkness. And I got everything right. And afterwards, well, the reaction the doctor gave me was, her mouth was wide open. And she just said, she said, we think, uh, I, although I cannot believe that you were one of the few people who have um, this, the scientific, I don't know what the scientific name for it is, it's pretty long and hard to pronounce. And, so, and basically, my eyes are in a different than cat eyes, and they were joking around my eyes a few times, they, um, they, they, they applied me for VR, which is visual rebuilding. Now, did, did you have any good. surgery? Did you have any surgery at this point in time, or or where were you at with that? Because you eventually did have some um, kind of surgery. I, I was about to. Um, they were prepping me. Uh, they were getting ready to prep me for it. At first, it was just like little shots, like right here and stuff, to dilate them. That's the first stage of visual rebuilding. The second stage is a is another procedure. I did have an eye surgery when I was when I was younger because I had a lazy eye. Okay. Now um, you uh, had went through a lot with the doctors and uh, you know uh, them disbelieving you. Did they wind up trying to think that it was psychological? Did they did they think that that was part of what was going on? For a while, they thought I had photophobia, the fear of light. Okay. So, so they thought, yeah. so, right? So they thought thought it was something else, really out of the realm of really what it was. Like I know from you know traumatic brain injury, uh, traumatic brain injury doctors love to you know go to the uh, psychological card with um, with with their evaluations. It's easy for them to wind up you know saying that, and uh, you know that way they uh, you know they're kind of covering their own butt that um, you know that they're taking a safe guess um, uh, when it's totally something else. So um, you know. Uh, I, I kind of, yeah, I kind of think, real, and they don't even realize how they can ruin a person's life with that. Yes. Oh. Okay, so you have that one right. That's for sure. So how, how is this? Um. Uh. You know, with what the doctors did and everything, because that's what you, uh, part of what you want to bring out uh, today is uh, not only you know the uh, uh, condition that you have, but also you would like to uh, for people to understand that you know um, that that doctors don't always get it right and that. They need to what? They need to speak up. It's the doctors aren't gonna, are going to always think they're right if you don't speak up. If you think there's something else wrong, speak up. And if they're not going to agree with you, if they don't agree with you, 
get a second opinion in that. If that doctor thinks you're right, it thinks that the first doctor was right, maybe there is something to what the first doctor said. Okay. But and, it, I got a second opinion. I got some help. So. And, and there's another aspect of it, too, is that, you know, family members, in my case and everything, you know, when doctors say something, uh, you know, I, I think that uh, uh, we as a society just um, think that, you know, um, we've given the doctors such a... Um, uh, you know, just uh, I, I, uh, yeah, yes, just that they actually walk on water and they think that they can, and you know, just uh, you know that, that what they say is our uh, gospel, and that you know we don't really second uh, guess them, and uh, you know people don't listen to the person, including including the doctor, um, they just don't listen to what the uh, patient is exactly telling them. Um, so this is a big problem. Uh, that is with traumatic brain injuries. That is with um, uh, other things as well. I've uh, actually, um, there was a, a, a woman that um, uh, had um, a condition um, uh, that she was telling her doctors about for 13 years. And uh, they, they didn't understand what was going on. Then she found out what it was. They were saying psychological. And, uh, you know, it was, it was, uh, it was actually lupus. And um, so... Um, and then, you know, she found that she had other medical conditions. So the, the doctors were really off base there. I had a friend that uh, a, a uh, doctor was telling his wife that it was a, 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 a pulled muscle, they found out it was cancer, and, uh, you know, she is not with us any longer due to that fact. So, um, you know, the, these are life, uh, life and death decisions at different points. And also the quality of life. Um, you know, myself, I unfortunately... Uh, um, the professional sector of our society has not understood what's uh, uh, been going on with me, and my life is upside down uh, at this point in time, nearly six years later. So, um, you know, uh, so so I, I understand what you're saying, and uh, and I agree that, that that people really need to um, uh, that if something's going on with uh, traumatic brain injuries, a lot of people like to um, not discuss it. They feel um, just. Uh, like they can't bring it out and they feel, you know, that they don't want people to know what's going on. But, but you know, you need to. Um, you, you need to bring these things out into the open so it doesn't happen to other people. And uh, so, so there is awareness. So um, I, I'm really happy that you're on uh, Dundalk TV today sharing this information. So um, let's see. So, so how is school going for you, Nick? Oh, I'm doing pretty well in school. Getting A's and everything. Um, uh I actually think I might have a surefire chance of getting an internship at an actual veterinary office. So, um, wonderful. I'm glad to hear that. Things are so things are great in that respect. Um, the the teachers I have are very kind, and understanding, knowing that I need to do everything digitally. I can't write on paper like everybody else can, or if I do, it's for a very short amount. So. And there, they. I actually um have one of my te one of the teachers. I have three classes in total that I'm taking this semester. One of my the first two teachers are together. So the first, so my first teacher, um, she's a very kind woman. She worries about me. Um, so she makes sure I get to my second class. I really don't need the help, but I'm just glad that there are people out there. Who enough to do stuff like that. Well, I, I wanted to add to that is that I, uh, I that's where I met you. It was at CCBC, and I, I went for one semester, and um, I really enjoyed it, and I felt that um, the um, majority, I would say 99.9% .9 of the, um, the instructors, uh, you know, did everything they could to make sure that, uh, you know, that you um, uh got the education you needed and then also the students um, uh, you know if you reached out to them um, for for some kind of help everybody was geared towards making your experience there a very positive experience and learning as much as you could so I really enjoyed CCBC and I'm, I'm glad uh, you're, you're sharing this information as well so you know I, I recommend that you know anybody that wants to go back to school is maybe um, uh, a little uh, leery uh, you know just feeling not 100% confident that, that at least give it a try CCBC is a great place and on top of that um, you're going to be coming to the uh, picnic that's going to be um, at the CCBC Dundalk campus on September 21st uh, from 10 to 2 you're going to be sharing your story there as well and uh, you know really looking forward to this and uh, I really uh, uh, you know 
owe a lot to uh, a, a big uh, uh, debt of gratitude to um, CCBC for letting me hold this event there. So it's a great place to go to school. Yeah. Yeah, it's one of the best. I, I think it's one of the best in um, Baltimore. I mean, it's not Ivy League or anything, but they at least give you the education you need to get started. So it was great for me. So, um, do you? <coughs> Excuse me. Did you have anything else that you'd like to add to the conversation, Nick? Well, you know, um, we didn't we didn't show your glasses. We didn't show your glasses that actually help. Um, you know, just uh. We didn't do that, and oh, you, oh, yeah. you are oh, you yeah, are yeah. sitting in you are sitting in dark uh, right now, which you really uh, you know is is your world is, is the world that you know is best for you now. But when you go outside the house, you're outside your dark room. You um, you you have these glasses, and would you explain them? Yes, these are um, these are um, these are um, these are basically simulate darkness for me in nighttime. They are made out of the same material that they use for solar panels. Now, you put, you slip them on. It lets me walk outside without my eyes feeling like they're burning. Guaranteed, they do not allow perfect vision. I still need the blind stick when I'm in an unfamiliar location. But soon that problem will be solved too because they're getting because I'm getting ready to get contact lenses that are made out of the same material that I can wear under this. Oh, under this. So, um, so that's actually, these actually help quite a bit, but just, they're not perfect. And, but they're making a lot of great strides with, um, with, um, low vision technology. Um, such as, um, listening devices that connect to almost, um, every device that you own. I have one of those right here. Hold on a second. This is um, you can get you can get this version at Walmart or any place you have. Press um, press one button and it'll tell you the and if you have it connected to um, a cell phone or something, it'll tell you the time. It'll tell you how much battery you have left on it. It'll you can press it twice to make a call. You can press it to make to make voice text. This, this is the kind of stuff that is available to the public, and I recommend men stuff like that for um, visually impaired people. Well, let me just ask a question that came to mind as you were talking about this, um, and, and going back to CCBC and your instructors uh, uh, being very helpful and understanding. Um, what is the um, uh, the rest of the uh, general sector of our society? Uh, what is uh, general society? Um, how are they to deal with with um, you know what is going on with you? Are they receptive? Are they difficult? You know, um, just where? How does that feel? They they, they they can be difficult at first if you don't have like a a, um, a paper from disability services or a paper from a doctor. They're not even gonna, they're not even gonna recognize your your claim. I can't even get. Uh, and who would this? And who would this be? Who? Nick, who would this be that you you know would want to see paperwork? I just um, who who would who? Employ employers. Okay, employers. Employers. Yeah, I I can't even get a job because of the ignorance of some employers. They don't seem to understand. They don't seem to understand, and you know what? That's it's kind of understandable, but it's very frustrating. It is very, very frustrating. And meeting the average guy on the street, um, you know, what is the receptive, uh, how, you know, how receptive are they to what you are telling them? I mean, how, how do they, um, you know, how do you feel about the, when you meet somebody and they're having a conversation um, uh, with just your... The, the, uh, you know, you know, they th I, I tell a person I'm legally blind, they say, you hide it very well, and it's just, I've had a lot of practice, believe me. Some people get freaked out. I've seen some very bizarre reactions. Well, heard some in my case. But, uh, you know, what are you going to do? It, it's If they don't like that you have this problem, if they can't help it, tough. You have this problem. You're not going anywhere. And it's not going to change the fact that you have it. And 
I'm, it's not just with legally blind people. I'm saying this to every person, a traumatic brain, a patient, um, a person with um, diabetes, they shouldn't be ashamed of it. And I, it really should change the value of the person they are. I, I fully understand what you're saying. Uh, you know, um, I, 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 um, you know, I feel that I was a very compassionate person before um, this all happened to people with um, uh, special needs, you know. Uh, um, but there is a large sector of our society that uh, just makes things harder. And um, if, if people only knew how much harder life is uh, having um, some kind of uh, uh, disability, um, you know, just uh, life is hard enough to get through as it is. But when you have a disability... And everyone around you is, is making it harder on you to get through the day. And they have, you know, really ridiculous opinions and, and you know, really far out uh, kind of notions about what's going on. And, uh, you know, and, and then with everybody debating what's going on with you when you've already told them, uh, you know, that makes life very difficult. So you're, you're, you're having to... Um, well, look at, look at it this way. Who's to say that their way is always right? I mean, I can see in the dark, like a normal person would see the daytime, but nobody can see the world I see. You know, what? The, it, it, may, it may seem lonely at first, but you have advantages that most people dream of having. I can see in places that most people need night vision goggles to see. True, the, the downside, the, the, the problem, the, the pros... I mean, the cons outweigh the pros in the instance, but you have a huge advantage in some places, and you have to look at the positive when when you're dealing with this kind of problem. And I guarantee with brain injuries, there aren't many positives, and I know it's hard to see the light and all of it, but, you, but there is one positive. You have been enlightened about how cruel and how messed up the medical world can be and that you need, and that he, other people need to know, and that's why you need to speak. Uh, people, people with traumatic brain injuries need to speak up. And people like yourself, like it's, you are today, you're you're bringing awareness too to not only the the uh, pitfalls of the professional community, uh, just in medicine in, in general, not only traumatic brain injuries, but you know. Um, the, now, now let's let me just you know. Uh, say that you know I know that the professional sector of our society does good uh, uh, you know amazing things with you know heart valves and things like that and some of the operations they do with um, with uh, uh, brain surgery and everything are absolutely amazing and uh, you know just um, uh, but the you know ac across the board uh, you know the, the doctors that I met and I met many of them and I try to uh, you know uh, get their help and make you know get them to understand what was going on with me and it was easier for me to just walk away from trying to get the doctors to understand and work on my own plan and you know start putting my life back together because they were only compounding my problems so you know uh, you know trying to get somebody it's like the, this is the way that I've learned to to do it uh, there's a gentleman that I was walking down the street that uh, speaks very broken English and I was trying to talk to him and, you know, we had a brief conversation. And when I left, I was like, I didn't really think that he understood what I had said to him. And I had I didn't really know where he was coming from. So, actually, I just feel like, you know, having this injury and trying to tell doctors, uh, many doctors, that it's like speaking a different language. Um, and, and they just don't get it. They just don't get it. No matter how hard you try to tell. Well, it's because they come... I try to look at it this way. There are two worlds. The, 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 the right side of the world and the inverted world. You guys like you and me are in the inverted world. We're, they're never going to understand us unless they put the first step forward to try. And so far, not many people have tried. It comes down so, to listening for me. I mean, I, I don't know if it would have happened with you. With me, if the doctors would have listened to what I was telling them, you know, I was actually saying I have a traumatic brain injury because I knew I I wound up seeing it on Dr. Daniel Ammons on MPTV. And, you know, I saw it here. I saw it there. I got a little piece of the puzzle here, a little piece of the puzzle there. I figured it out even having a traumatic brain injury. And somehow or another, when I'm sitting in front of a doctor telling him yeah, exactly what's going like, on. Like not listening. 
telling them exactly what's going on, what the problems I'm having. You know, when when you wind up telling somebody you hit your head at 10 to 15 miles an hour, and they 10 to 15 miles an hour, and they can't figure out what's going on. I'm sorry, but you know, I really feel that the person's uh, medical license should be removed. To to, to me, I mean, that's, you know, that's the way I that's the way I that's the way I would feel if, if I was in that if I was in that spot. The different situations have different precautions. They have to take different precautions. And I'm not saying what they did to you was right, but it, there is also the fact that uh, what was the state you were in when you were trying to tell them this? First uh, of all, oh, I was, I was, I you know, know I, first. well, well, just, um, you know, just having a hard day, uh, remembering, uh, you know, having a hard time knowing what day it was. They should have known right away. They should have known right away then. They should have known right away that there was something wrong. And they shouldn't have put you in a in a mental hospital. And well, no, they didn't put me in a hospital. I actually have never been in the hospital and never received one day of treatment. I have actually had to do this all on my own. They said it was post traumatic stress is what they tried saying originally. Then they wound up trying to go the psychological card, and it's <laughs> who like your, who is your doctor? Uh, well, who's this is doctor? many. This is he many doctors. This is many doctors. This is I went. It was a revolving door of doctors that I went to. I kept on trying to get help and trying to go and go and get are help. You sure are you sure they were actually graduates? <laughs> Believe me, they, 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 you know, I'm talking about uh, 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 nor, nor, uh, psych psychologists and, 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 you know, people from, uh, let's see, um, uh, neurologists, neurologists. I went to neurologists and everything. They just didn't understand it. They would say, I had one doctor say, you look too good. Well, you know, that's one of the things that they wind up saying in the, you know, uh, brain injury community uh, to start with is you cannot go by looks. And I have a, a neurologist saying, you look too good. It's like, okay, well, you must have missed day one of, uh, you know, your not neurology class. Uh, <laughs> yeah. you know, so, you know, yeah, that's what I would have said. It, it is a horrible, and and, that, and my life has been a nightmare. I've nearly burned my house down. You know, I've nearly, uh, you know, um, killed myself. I put my uh, neighbors in danger uh, doing this kind of stuff, and I've never gotten any kind of help, and I've had to do it on my own. I've been uh, near homelessness, uh, you know, been, been, you know, worried about that. I'm getting ready to go back for another, um, uh, I have to go back to social services. I'm wondering whether or not they're, they're going to pull the, carpet out from under me uh, on, on something and, you know, say that, you know, and if it does, then, you know, uh, my life is, um, is uh, you know, just, um, if I have the little bit of support that I have, you know, um, you know, I, I'm really going to be in a lot worse shape. So it is no difficult uh, a, a journey when other people don't understand it. Now, when you're preaching to the choir, I found out, oh my God, you know, just people that know it, have lived it and all that. You know, they fully understand, but uh, unfortunately, the doctors uh, don't. And there's, you know, I'm not alone. These, there's millions of people like me across the world that, um, <clears throat> you know, try to get their physicians to understand. And unfortunately, they don't. So that's why we're ho holding this global traumatic brain injury uh, picnics. And, um, and that's why I'm doing uh, 24 hours um, on uh, Dundalk TV to, to um, you know, make an impact and help get the word out. And also... Um, I realize after having my injury that it isn't only traumatic brain injuries, that it is uh, many different uh, uh, medical conditions uh, that people wind up dealing with uh, a, a living hell when they're trying to uh, get the doctors to understand. And I, as well as you, just like you said uh, at, you know, before, when we were talking before we started the interview, that you want people to understand that doctors just don't always get it right. And, uh, you know, for me, I want, I want uh, family members to know, you know, when you take somebody to the doctors, you really have to think about what's going on. Uh, you have to use a lot of common sense. And um, you really want to check out, uh, you know, the doctors that you're going to. Um, I never for once, you know, uh, was prepared for this. I never thought about, you know, just in case something happens, I have to have, you know, the most outstanding doctor that I can find. Uh, now, I had a great uh, general physician who tried to do everything he could for me, but unfortunately, you know, being hurt with, uh, through workman's compensation, workman's compensation blocked everything that my doctor tried to do for me. And, uh, you know, just a um, matter of fact, they, they wound up getting it to the point where I couldn't even go to that doctor anymore. I had to go to another doctor. So, um, it, it, it's, you know, it's horrible. So anyway, Nick, I'm really happy that we had the, the, uh, the this interview. Did you have anything that uh, did you have anything else that you'd like to share today? Yes, um, one thing. 
I know I know that people might feel discouraged when you say, when you say that you have to share common sense because it's very hard to share common sense when you're just messed up, but you still have to try. It, do not give up in any instance. If you think there's something wrong, speak up. Yes, That's and I. All. I agree. And being a family member, getting back to that too, you have to go by, you know, if you you know this person better than anybody else, you have to go by the signals that they are sharing and, you know, which what you're getting from them. And if the doctor doesn't seem to be on the same page with you, then don't go with that doctor. So we'll finish it up right there. And, uh, you know, what, what do you think about the, uh, what do you think about the event uh, uh, at CCBC on the 21st? What do you think about that? Writing up a speech as we speak. Okay, sounds great. Well, thank you, Nick, and I look forward to. I'll, I'll, I'll be talking to you before then, which uh, I think is 17 days away now. Uh, so it's getting closer. <laughs> it's getting close very quickly. And uh, so, and, and thank you so much for the interview. Okay. And thank I'm glad. You, I'm, I'm glad we got to talk uh, a little bit about CCBC and, and you know just uh, uh, what a great place it is to go to school there too. Okay. Talk to, talk to you again I soon. Think it's a great place to yeah. And have a wonderful and safe traumatic brain injury free day. Thank you, man. See All right. You too. All right, buddy.